So what does your office do? The Office of New Drugs is probably best known for the, the work we do on deciding what drugs get approved for marketing in the United States. So that's the work that uh, most people are aware of. Awesome responsibility. It is a very big responsibility, one that we take very seriously, obviously. Um, we have other responsibilities as well related to overseeing all the clinical investigations of new drugs, meaning the studies in humans. Uh, we make sure that those studies are safe for the participants and that the studies are accomplishing you know, effective outcomes so that they're useful uh, in the drug development program. We're also responsible for monitoring drugs after they've been approved for new information that may become available about new uses or safety concerns that need to be addressed. I think that's a pretty important part of this because once the FDA approves a new drug, the, uh, the investigation continues, the monitoring continues. It's very important for people to understand that you, we don't know everything about new drugs at the time we approve them. That's kind of built into the system because if we waited until we knew everything you could possibly know, then the wait would be too long and patients would be denied access to important new treatments. So there's always a balance that has to be made between how much certainty you have about the drug at time of approval and how much uncertainty, what you don't know. And that's why we have to have a very active program after approval to look for new information. How long have you been doing this? I've been at FDA almost 18 years now. I've been the director of the Office of New Drugs for eight years. How have you seen things change? I, I think there's much more of an expectation for FDA to be more actively involved in how the drugs are used after we approve them. When I came to the agency in 1992, um, the agency was expected to do our work before approval and make those decisions about what drugs went into the marketplace. And then the rest was left essentially to the practice of medicine. And I think over time, as things have gotten more complex, healthcare has evolved, uh, and there have been some safety concerns about um, the growing use of drugs, the expectations are that we will play a much more active role in communicating what we know about drugs to the prescriber, to the doctor, the patient, so that they can make well-informed decisions on how to use those drugs most appropriately. So you've talked about what it used to be like and what it's like now. What, how do you envision the future? I think there's going to be continuing expectation that we play a more active role in helping the healthcare system to most effectively and safely utilize drugs. And we have several initiatives underway where we're trying to leverage the information we know and the expertise we have in-house and work with partners outside the agency to have that actually show up and have an impact on public health outcomes, uh, outcomes for individual patients, but also public health in general. And that's why those of us who work here work here, because we want to have an impact on patients uh, and public health. And some of those initiatives are? Well, there's one called the Safe Use Campaign, which we rolled out a few months ago, which is really intended to do exactly what I said. It's to leverage our resources and the resources of other stakeholders, such as professional groups like doctor groups, patient stakeholder groups, and others to get the message out and multiply the message and make it real. For so long, FDA communicated to the public about how to use drugs through the labeling. And the labeling, while it's a very important scientific technical document, it's not a very good communication vehicle. So we need to work to find better ways with the prescribers, with the patients, with the pharmacist to get the information out in a usable form. And in today's environment with the you know, explosion of electronic systems and medical record systems that are electronic, it opens up whole new avenues that we never had to explore before. And safe use is, the, the goal there is to cut down on, on what? It's to, number one, improve the decision making about use of drugs in individual patients. Because at the end of the day, a doctor and a patient have to make an informed decision about what drug is right for them and what are the consequences of the risk mm -hmm. associated with that drug. 
Uh, it's also intended to, from a population basis, decrease on the adverse consequences of either inappropriate use of a drug or just making people aware of risk of drugs. And from your position and also the position of a patient and a, and a healthcare provider, you never have all of the information that you might like to have to make that risk-based decision, but you just do the best that you can. Well, we do the best we can. You know, we have standards for how much information we require before a drug is approved, and those are pretty high standards. We're viewed as the gold standard for the world, I think, by most people on our drug approval decisions and how we uh, go about doing our work. But it's important that we transfer and work with the healthcare system to transfer that knowledge into effective use of those drugs, safe use of those drugs. You know, doctors are very busy. They're expected to see a lot of patients in a short amount of time. There's been an explosion of new drugs available over the past couple of decades. So there's a lot to keep up with. So I think we need to leverage new systems to help doctors to have that information so they can make those, those well-informed decisions. So you've been on the front lines of the, of the whole, debate is the wrong word, the whole discussion about um, drugs are not approved fast enough, and on the other side, drugs are approved too quickly. Right, right. Uh, we usually get those complaints at the same time. Uh, you know, the reality is we don't make systematic decisions that we're going to speed up or slow down our decision making on drugs. We look at each application for marketing of a drug on its own merits and independent of any perceived FDA is speeding up, FDA is slowing down. So you go where the science leads. The, the science gives you the information, but the science doesn't always give you the answers. At the end of the day, we have to make judgment calls about whether we think on a population basis, the drug's benefits outweigh its risk. But people need to understand we're making that on a population basis of the people who are expected to use the drug for the use that we're approving it for. That needs to then be translated into the individual patient by a doctor and the patient making a well-informed decision. Because what we may decide on a population level makes sense, that the benefits exceed the risk. For an individual patient, uh, the benefits don't exceed the risk in certain cases, and those are the decisions that need to be made. Thank you. Thank you.